Hi, this is Darren Lyle. I think we can now work on the boots of the character. Let's take a look at our character screen layout here. And let's look at these boots. Um, they're made up of different pieces. Uh, there's this kind of top piece here. There's the toe piece, the sole of the shoe, and then there's this inner piece here. And of course, the round parts with the little blue light on it. So I think we can work on these kind of individually, one at a time. Let's start with this top piece right here. So I'll press Shift A and in the Add menu I'll choose a cylinder. Um, we don't need 32 sides to this so I'll press the T key and in the Add Cylinders panel I'll take this down to maybe 12. Let's try that. Hit the T key again there and I'll just take this and move it into place. Now, I didn't deal with the caps or the top and the bottom of this in that panel, so I think I probably need to do that. Let me tumble around, hit the Z key, and tab into edit mode. And in face mode, I'll just delete these two faces with the X key and then delete faces. All right, so now let's go back to the side view and go back to wireframe and I'll move this into place over here and just begin scaling them in a bit on either side in the Y axis and in the X axis something like this. So now I'll tab into edit mode and alt click one of these edges and let's begin extruding down. I'll just hit E and enter and then pull down with the manipulator here and it's going to need to extend down, so maybe if I grab these three faces and maybe these three over here, let's see. Or maybe I only need two. Let's, let's try this out. I think maybe I only need two. Let's try it. Back to the side view, and I'll hit E and extrude down. It looks like I need to scale out a bit, so... Let me go back up here and begin working on this. So I'm going to take this and scale it out a bit in the X. I can switch to vertex mode and then press control and left click and drag to select these points and just scale out in the X again. Same thing down here. There we go. And maybe I'll hit extrude one more time and bring this straight down. And let's uh, scale it out in the X just a little. And maybe scale it in here in the Y like this just a little to get that curve. And I think we should come up here and extrude out this piece up here. So I'll hit E and then S to scale in. E and pull that straight up like that and then we can hit E and scale in again there all right let's go back and see what we've done there we go so this is the piece we have so far so we might be able to move this forward just a bit it looks like the legs just a little too big here that's all so I'll maybe scale some of these in just a little bit like this so let's go back and see what other piece we can create. How about the sole of the shoe now? Let's try that. For that, I think I'll just create a circle. So I'll press Shift A, go to Mesh and Circle. And let's hit the T key and take a look at it. Once again, I don't need 32. I'll just do 12 again. And so there we have the circle there. Now we can begin to scale it and adjust it to fit the reference image. So I'll tab into edit mode, go to the scale tool, and I'll just begin scaling this in the Y. I'll also move it over here. So there's the outline of the sole of the shoe. We can now take this and begin moving it around to get it to be more shaped like the sole of a shoe. So maybe we could bring these in a bit. Now we can tab into edit mode again and select everything and I'll just extrude straight up now 
to create the sole of the shoe. And if we come back over here to the default view, we can see that the polygons are facing the wrong way. You can see that dark gray here on the outside and the light gray on the inside. We need to flip that around. So I'll just hit A to select everything and then press Control N to recalculate the normals and that will then flip those and make it so the front of the polygons are on the outside. Now I'll just take this edge and just scale it in just a bit like this. And for the bottom of the shoe, we kind of want edges flowing across here so that we have something to, so we have an edge to bend the foot at at the, um, at the ball of the foot. So I think what I'm going to do is take this edge and extrude it, and I want to scale it in, but now I want to bring it straight across. So maybe this point to this point, and this point to this point, and I'm just hitting Control and clicking the next point, and that selects the edge between those two points. And now I'm going to hit Extrude and Scale straight in the X to bring these together, like so. And then I can connect these up, so I'll just select two points, press Alt-M and choose At Center. There we go. So now to fill these holes here, I can just select an edge and press the F key and that'll put a face in there. And notice it's a four-sided polygon. That's what we want. We want quads. And for this, if I select an edge and hit the F key, well, it does that. That's not exactly what we want. I could press Alt and click all the edges and hit the F key, but then I've got a face that's greater than four sides and I don't want that either. But while this is here, I can just cut this right here so I can press the K key and then click on this point and then click on this point and then hit enter and that will create an edge between those two points. So now we've got faces along here, quads, four-sided polygons, and we've got edges going across so we can bend at the ball of the foot. And in fact, maybe I need to even add an edge here and that'll be where the foot will bend. All right, so we've got the sole of the shoe. Let's go back and take a look at what else we can create. For this piece here, I might use a circle again. I'll press Shift A, Mesh, Circle. It should come in with 12 vertices, and it does. And I'm just going to take this and move it up and rotate it a bit like this. Bring it down like that. And I'll move this over to here and scale it in the X just a bit. There we go. Now I think I'm going to delete. Well, I know I want to delete these down here. Hit X and vertices. And I think I can keep these. I'm going to move these back out like this. And this is just going to be the beginning of this piece here. So I can take this now and press E and just extrude this and bring it forward. And what I'm going to do is click this point up here and move the cursor with Shift S to the selected point. And then I'm going to hit the period key to move the pivot point to that point there. Select everything and then press S and Z and that will scale it up just a bit like that and flatten it up some. And then I'll just take these two points here and just drag them up a bit. Oh, let's press Control comma to get back to the median point and just move that up like that. All right, so now what we can do is Control click and drag those, hit extrude, move that out some. Now I'm going to scale in the Y, flatten that up a hair. And I'm going to move the pivot point back down here. So move the cursor to the selected. Hit the period key to move the pivot point down to there. And then when I select these points here, I can scale down in the Z and it'll move those down just a bit like that. All right, let's do it again. Move forward. Move the pivot point. 
select them and scale in the Z. And let's extrude this again. So I'll, I'll hit E, move it forward. And I think I will take this, move the cursor, select these points, and I'll rotate these down from that 3D cursor and rotate them down, scale them in the Y just a hair, bring them in in the X, kind of like that. So let's see how that works. We'll need to take some time and fit this to the sole of the shoe, but I think that's going to work okay. We'll need to bring these in and things like that, like this. All right, so I've pulled some of those into place. There we go. So we've got that piece now. For this piece in here, I think we can um, we can be kind of tricky actually. Let me uh, let me go in here and let me show you. I'm going to select some edges and duplicate them and then bridge those edges to create this piece in the middle of the boot. So let's try this. I'm going to select this piece and I'm going to grab this edge and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to bring it up a bit and maybe scale it in the Y just a bit, something like that. And I'm going to split it out. I'm going to press the P key and choose selection. And now that's a whole other piece. That's a whole other object. So now I can tab into edit mode and if I recall, we added an edge here, didn't we? So instead of 12 edges, this is going to be 14. I'm going to pair this up with an edge up here that was part of a 12-sided cylinder. So what I'm going to do is take these points, I believe, press X and dissolve vertices. There we go. So now that should have 12 sides. Yep, 12 of 12. Okay. So let's come up here now, do the same thing. Let's select this edge, duplicate it, scale it in just a bit. Uh, I'm going to split it out from this object with the P key and choose selection. Now it's its own object. So I'll select that and this other edge, hit Control J to join them, tab into edit mode now, select them both with alt shift there and then now that i have these two bridged together i can press control e and bridge edge loops there we go so now that creates that piece i'm going to hit the t key to come over here to this bridge edge loops panel and i'm going to increase the number of cuts say here maybe one Let's try two. Let's do two cuts. So now we've got that piece. I'll select this point, move the cursor to it, cursor to selected, select that edge. I need to move the pivot point to the cursor, so I'll hit the period key. And then I can scale in the Y just a little bit like that. There we go. And I'll do the same thing down here. I'll scale in the Y like that. There we go. So now we've got that piece built in there. Now we're going to need to do a little point pulling, but that's not too bad. So in the next video what we'll do is we'll extrude the edges to give each of the pieces a little bit of thickness. We'll apply a subdivision surface modifier to them and we'll also build the cylindrical pieces here with the blue light on it. So that's coming up next. I'll see you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling tool set as we build the mech character and the environment. We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode, and as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting, creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, 
and will add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping, what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles render engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program, GIMP, to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the mech. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move, so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting, as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.